Hello, guys. Welcome back to Lunatic Astrology. I'm your astrologer, Lori Lothian, and today we're talking about Mercury in the heart of the sun. It's also called Kazemi on April the 2nd, around 4 p.m. PST, Pacific Time Zone, and you adjust to wherever you are. But the whole day of April 2nd has this energy of the messenger of the gods powwowing with the divine energy of the universe, the intelligence of the universe represented by the sun. And these energies, when this happens, can be very much about a divine instruction that Mercury is getting on our behalf for one area of our life, depending on which of the 12 houses it falls into. And you know, it's sometimes these Mercury things are so literal. Back in uh, November 29th, 2021, Mercury met in the heart of the sun in Sagittarius. Was it November 29th? The 29th degree of Sagittarius sometime in November. Can't remember when. And it was on the asteroid uh, Panacea, which means the cure-all. And I predicted that was one of the reasons why I thought the pandemic would end. And the cure-all, I said at the time, would be Omicron itself because it would be mild and pandemic and everybody would get some natural immunity as well from getting it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how this guy looks for everyone based on your sign. This is going to be a short, fast, and fun video. Yeah, it says April for my April video. Go check out my April All, All Signs month ahead. Amazing stuff to talk about in that sky as well for you. But I didn't include the Kazemi. The Kazemi is, you know, a regular event, maybe six times a year. Mercury either retrogrades into the heart of the sun or when he's close to Earth, or he's far from the Earth and he's going in a direct motion across the face of the sun. You can use this energy to meditate, to vision board, to daydream, to dream journal. You can use this to come to my Mercury Kazemi free class, which we're all going to do a guided meditation to pull in the energy of the fixed star alpha rats with Mercury and the sun on this particular 13 degrees of Aries Kazemi that's happening on April 2nd. Alpha rats is an amazing star, the nature of Jupiter and Venus, both benefics, uh, a planet, that, a star that can bring popularity, public appeal, riches, glory, uh, goodness, fame. It's just like an all-purpose yay, you know what I mean? And so <laughs> why not take the light of Alpha Rats, which is like 14 degrees and 18 minutes star, and uh, Kazemi at 13 degrees and harness it, 13 degrees and some change. Um, I think it's 11 uh, minutes. And that's an orb. And also the day after, which is April the 3rd, the sun will actually join with Alpha Rats as well. So it's a really hot weekend in terms of action. You know, you've got the new moon on uh, April Fools uh, in Aries as well at 11 degrees. And you got Mercury in the heart of the sun on the 2nd, which is cool. And then you got the sun joining with Alpha Rats directly on the 3rd of April. It's a very enchanted, very hot, very spicy weekend for action like this. Okay, so let's talk about your sign. We'll start with Aries. Let me show you what the sky looks like, okay, just so you can see it. Um, also, I want to say there's an asteroid, and I'm so sorry, but let's just call it the L asteroid. It's like, Lu I'll try to spell it. Lu <laughs> it means a desire, to, a yearning for home, a desire for homecoming, a migra migratory bird yearning to go back to its home. This is a Hawaiian myth goddess energy or bird mi migration myth. And this asteroid, Lili Lekalui Lana or whatever, is sitting <laughs> with the sun and with um, the Mercury Kazemi. So there's this energy of yearning to go home to find a homecoming or something like that playing in the sky i'm going to go honestly guys i'm going to show you the sky but i'm also now just super wanting to know how to pronounce that thing i'm going to read it okay to myself and then see if i can make a pronunciation from it <laughs> you know you gotta laugh right but who knows where i can find the phonetics on that baby um let me just grab it um sheets so i can see where it is the kazimi the kazimi was it oh was it with Mercury or was it somebody where somewhere else? Okay, let me just pause the thing while I pull the sky story up for you and be a little bit more specific and a little less scattered here. Give me a sec, guys. Okay, so I pulled it up. Yes, this asteroid is conjunct the sun and Mercury by two degrees at the time of the Kazemi. It is called Lili, L-E-L-E, Lili, A, A, K, U, K, U, Honua, Lili, A, K, U, I'm probably saying it wrong anyway, Lili, 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 A, K, U, Honua, okay, we're just going to call it L, 
from, from now on going forward rather than belabor that, but it is to do with a homesickness and a yearning for home, a return to home and all of that. Now I'm going to go quickly through this and I think I just might show you the picture so you see what I'm talking about. And I'm going to do the all signs, of course, that's the whole fun of it. Um, and it's going to be a short video, guys, half an hour. All right, I just want to whip through and give you the gist of the Kazemi. Come to my Kazemi class. I'm going to do a meditation. I'm going to guide a storyline. We're going to draw in the alpha rats, the homecoming asteroid. We're going to pull it all together in a live class we'll talk a little bit more in depth about the astrology but then we're going to go into a very cool guided visualization that i've created where we can harness this energy maybe get a divine message and download ourselves on this enchanted sky so as you can see this is what it looks like and i did put two asteroids in here why because they're, they're there and they're aspectually connected the kazemi is at 13 degrees and 11 minutes of aries do you have planets there is your aries rising sun or moon anywhere near 13 degrees wow this is an important kazemi for you and, you know, of all people, grab it and run with it. And in particular, auspicious and flowing as well for Sagittarius rising sun and moon and Leo's rising sun and moon, because th this is trining your right sun and moon and rising sign, especially if it's anywhere, let's say between eight and 18 degrees of Aries, you're getting a lot of juice, okay, from this particular divine instruction download Kazemi on fixed star alpha rats, which is, of course, as I said, glory and riches and luck and popularity and in benefic energy star so one of the things and when we do the class if you want to come to my class we will go into the archetypal story of that star in greater depth so you can really get a grasp of it and it'll be a little slideshow but then there'll be the divine downloadable meditation story that we're going to do together um vesta is the vestal flame of sacred devotion she's three degrees away from these guys so this is a nice tight sextile what are you devoting yourself to what is um worth your time and effort and perseverance what is a sacred calling or a sacred area of devotion and then series is harvest abundance cornucopia uh, reaping something in your life. And th this is kind of a, a one story, right? Because these guys are talking to each other. So even though Mercury is getting instructions in the heart of the sun, the divine intelligence, you can see that there is a conversation going on with him as well with these other energies. Mercury will not be visible in the sky till after about the 16th or 17th of April when he's 15 degrees away from the sun. Therefore, Maybe what this is about in your sky, when I do the all signs, you may not be able to have an actual visible out picturing of the new directions or messages that Mercury has for your life, depending, of course, on where this part of your sky is, it could be your home life, it could be your marriage, we'll be doing the all signs in a minute. But um, you may not see the actual out picture till after the middle of April. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, there could be a delay. We might need to have a, a very visible version of Mercury and not an invisible version of Mercury, you know, in the sky. So we're going to go ahead and do the all signs. And I'm going to start, of course, with Aries, especially because Aries is having the Kazemi. So it makes it particularly cool and exciting for the Aries people. I am an Aries sun and moon. Number one, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check the description box below for all the things I have going. Uh, I'm having a special for April because it's my 60th birthday. Sign up for my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter and you're going to get free access value $47 to all 12 forecasts for 2022. Each video is an hour long in-depth forecast for each sign. So you get the whole bundle. You can do, you know, share it with your, your kids. You can look at the, your husband's rising and your friends and family. It's a really fun thing to do. So, and you know, go for it. You sign up for my newsletter immediately. As soon as you sign up for my weekly Cosmic Moonshine forecast newsletter, you're going to have in your box access to this free gift for me. It's my way of filling up my newsletter to reach a thousand. I'm at 870 or 80 now as a birthday gift to me, which is happening on April 4th. This particular sale will end or this free gift on the 21st of April. And then my year ahead videos will go back to being a purchase item only. Alrighty. So let's talk about uh, the Aries people first, and then we'll move on, of course, to uh, everyone else after that. Um, let me just cue my sky up so that I have Aries on the horizon. I'm using whole sign houses because I'm a Hellenistic traditional astrologer at this juncture. Um, but, you know, if you have a Placidus chart in front of you and you think, you know, oh, Lori's saying doesn't match my sky, I'm using whole sign houses, one sign, one house, 30 degrees of one sign, mapping over the 30 degrees of one house. All right. So Aries, rising sign, sun, moon, people. Number one, this is an energy for you, which is quite lovely in the house of your body, in the house of your identity, in the house of you, period. 
And what I love about it is that this is Mercury getting a divine instruction, a whisper of some new thing to do with your identity, to do with your body, to do with your health, maybe to do with um, some kind of new direction that you might act on yourself, because of course, it's about you. It's not about other people in your life. And um, so what I think I, I would say for you guys because there is a sacred flame of devotion in the house of your hopes, dreams, and wishes, uh, there might be a real call for Mercury to pull from that sacred flame in your house of your deepest wishes and dreams for your life. At the same time, Ceres, this harvest goddess in the third house, could bring you some abundance uh, in the weeks that follow this Kazemi in your online world, in your, if you teach or instruct or want to learn something uh, as well, that's third house energy can also do to be to do with um, writing a book or any act of writing and stuff like your website and your online stuff as well. So those energies are activated. Some of this good new, yay, alpha rats, popularity, success, and fame sort of spills over to the, the Vestal Flame into series. So 11th house theme. Now, by the way, 11th house is also your friends who might give you favors or stuff like that. And it could be that in the two or three weeks that follow by sometime after April 16th, you'll see evidence of you know, some kind of favors from friends or, you know, lucky breaks from friends or something like that, giving you also new opportunities. And finally, it could be a real clear reset for your physical health um, that Mercury gets some kind of divine inspiration a download for you about ways to improve your health and um, your physical well-being as well. And it's also auspicious with alpha rats playing along in this storyline. And, you know, this yearning for home, this migratory bird energy, it could mean that Ceres gives you a chance to take a journey in the house of trips and travel, that you travel to a place after this, sometime after mid-April, that feels like home and you have a sense of a homecoming, and that may also be a part of what's going on. Taurus sun moon rising sign. As I said, I'm going quick guys. This is happening for you. This Mercury in the heart of the sun in the 12th house. So this is kind of like your already dreams, visions, inner life, daydreams, meditations, whatever this inner life stuff is, not the outer life, circumstantial life, but the inner, more spiritual part of you is getting this a big, huge alpha rats, new divine instruction, yearning for homecoming vibe. Okay. So it's kind of the ideal thing for Taurus is to use this like dream journal on the second of April. Of course, take my class, check the description box. It's free. And you might get a lot of juice out of that live webinar. It's an hour long and you get a replay if you can't come. But in your case, you're the, like I'm doing a guided meditation. You're the ideal candidate for this one. You could have some, some serious divine downloads coming through in the sky for you. You could also find that th themes of foreign lands are prevalent. The 12th house can be foreign shores like the ninth and for some of you tauruses or some kind of really supreme yay coming through in april especially after the 16th maybe where there's a message from the gods that connects you to foreign lands and could also stimulate prosperity and a sense of vocational alignment with series in your second house of earnings well at the same time that vestal flame in your career house and the house of your visible outpictured purpose and actions in your career is also being uh, given a lift here uh, in this little mini grand trine. So you could find that something inspires you on a trip to a foreign land toward greater income and flow regarding purpose, career and money. That's an example. Many ways it can play out. There's no doubt about it. Um, mostly, though, I'd say Harvest God is sitting in your second house with this Kazemi. Look for some inbound uh, increase in wealth and money, possessions and all of that earnings coming for you uh thank you to this sky and look for the out picture uh, of that kazemi reset sometime maybe after the middle of april when mercury is able to visibly give you the results that he's capable of gemini sun moon and rising sign you've got mercury in the heart of the sun in your 11th house of good spirit this is a very positive very lucky and fortunate house already now we've got this big star alpha rats Pipe, piping in the sense for yearning and homecoming. Uh, first of all, if you don't like your friend groups right now, or you're feeling disconnected from the larger social groups that you uh, want to belong to, this can be a renewal here uh, and a sense of homecoming to those groups or finding new groups, migrating to new groups of belonging, new circles of friendship that really land for you 
and really feel like a good place to be. And, you know, Alpha Rats can bring you popularity and the 11th house could be a fame house. So if you're a Gemini and you're doing things on online or you aspire to micro celebrity or viral, viral fame on TikTok or something, certainly for some of you, this could be a reset. They could offer that to you, especially after April 16th or so when Mercury becomes visible again in the sky. Uh, the Vestal Flame of Devotion is participating from your ninth house of your Dharma, your purpose, your spiritual inclinations, your beliefs, your faith, um, higher education, book publishing, themes like that. Um, participating, meaning that think of those themes in relationship to what could outpicture in the end of the story, like after April 16th. What I also would say is cornucopia harvest and fruiting and reaping some rewards in the physical body house is also happening with series here. And so it's also maybe um, a time in which you're prospering in your thriving vitality physically or up, up, up ticking that the vestal flame is in the foreign lands and travel house. Maybe there's a trip that will come out of this and by you get time you get to mid April onward. This Mercury messenger has concocted a alpha rat superstar journey abroad or somewhere unusual for you to restore yourself, but at the same time, up level your friendship circles and popularity. All right, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign. Guys, I need to hit a chocolate. Where's my chocolate bar? I'm having a sugar loaf. Hang on. This is the end of a work day and a Patreon community meeting, and I'm so hungry. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, I need chocolate. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to end up with chocolate now. <laughs> Cancer, sun, moon, and rising. You have the energy of the Kazemi reset on the glorious fixed style off rats in your career house. Wow. Up level time. After April 16th, look for some positive news, popularity, fame, glory, and riches coming out of your career area of your sky, but also new directions and new directives and new messages that Mercury is trying to give you in that area. And maybe feeling like you're coming home to yourself in alignment with your career, with that homecoming energy playing such a role. You also have this um, vestal flame in the eighth house of money that like you can leverage a bank loan, a business loan, business partner money, tax rebate money, investment monies, things like that. Applying positively towards your career reset. At the same time, series of harvest goddess in the 12th house of PayPal Stripe accounts, international barter and trade <laughs> is also activating. This looks like a lot of energy around prosperity coming from a reset button in your career of some kind for you. Um, series is also reaping a harvest potentially from your subconscious, your dreams at night. Uh, guidance from your meditations as well, aligning you with more prosperity and a, kind of a reset and, and a bit of an exciting new development in your career. Uh, look for mid-April onward for that to be obvious and manifest for you. And come to my class, okay? Uh, on April the 2nd, it's free and it's going to go into more depth about that star and about this asteroid. And then we're going to do a guided meditation. It's only 60 minutes plus you get a replay. We're doing it during the Kazemi. Okay. Next, you go, you guys are having moving on Leo, Leo, you are have sun, moon and rising, you're having the uh, Kazemi of Mercury and the sun together. And, and it's happening in your ninth house. Now, as I said earlier, fire signs like you will really benefit from a lot of lucky uh, breaks from this Kazemi, especially if your rising sign sun or moon is anywhere within five degrees on either side of the Kazemi at 13. And so one of the things I say, is that you're definitely going to feel uh, with this ninth house activation that things are really opening up for you, Leos, in ninth house ways, like uh, foreign lands and travel, uh, pilgrimage, your spiritual beliefs, your book publishing house, your academia house. Um, yeah, so things are having a beautiful reset up in that part of your sky, the house of the father in Vedic astrology for some of you, Leos. And at the same time, the vessel flame of sacred devotion from your seventh house of marriage and business partnerships is a supporting energy for what's going on in your ninth house. And then series of harvest and abundance and cornucopia and reaping things, uh, energy that female goddess uh, is sitting in your 11th house of good spirit, where you can also get windfalls and she can bring windfalls. Like the wind blows the apples off the tree. That's a windfall. So you can have a financial windfall as well, but it's connected again to the ninth house from I went through the father, through connections to foreign lands, book publishing, your spiritual beliefs and directions or court cases, eh? the ninth house is court cases. So winning in a court case as well.
rising sign. You are having the reset Kazemi, Mercury on Alpha Rats and the asteroid L sit, sitting in your eighth house. Oh, well, this is just a money story, guys. This is like you're up leveling the money story. Now, mid-April onward, you'll know what I mean. Your spouse gets a promotion and you benefit. Uh, some elderly person passes and bequeathes you something in your family system. A, um, a bank loan that you didn't think you'd get approved for comes through. Your credit card company uh, gives you amazing offers. The taxes you paid last year were too much and you get a rebate, things like that. So mid-April onward, this kind of money is coming through for you. And Alpha Rat brings extra juice, glory, and goodness and riches to the story. The de sacred devotional flame in the house of your work routines and health routines, their sixth house, is amplifying and supporting this energy. So maybe this financial prosperity supports your devotion to your physical body and health routines and your work routines. And Ceres is harvesting in your career house some kind of windfall and gain as well. So they're all separate places, but they may be interconnected. So pay attention to April 16th for positive career and work developments for sure, but also prosperity. So maybe you are getting the raise as well. Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign. You get this energy of the reset of Kazemi, Mercury, on Alpha Rats in your seventh house. This is powerful for you because it's angular. It's in the house sign across the way from your rising sign. This is often experienced as somebody else's stuff though. So this could be going on for your business partner or your marriage partner or your business or, business or marriage is resetting here. Alpha Rats brings positivity though, glory, power, riches, and even popularity for your business partner, maybe, or your marriage partner. If you have an audience, like as you serve an audience, like I do, <clears throat> this is your marketplace and this is where you reach them. And this is a powerful reset here. So a new popularity and potential success with your clients and audience for you as well. Um, series is granting harvest in the ninth house of higher education, academia, foreign lands and travel. Foreign shores are a place that you might aspire to go after April 16th and have some success in that regard. And um or, or to do with legal legal affairs that require a judge's a decision or th things like that. <clears throat> the vessel flame in your enthusiastic energy of your uh, fifth house, where you've had a lot of intensity uh, of Saturn sort of squashing your fun in the last year or so. Well, this could be you're lighting a sacred flame of a new business idea or a sacred flame of a new love relationship or a sacred flame of a new romantic relationship connected to foreign lands, foreign shores, courts, and uh, all that stuff I said about the ninth house. But this reset is powerfully in that seventh house. So a lot of this might feel like it's another person's story and that this is all themes that apply to your partner in business or love. Scorpio, sun, moon, rising sign, Mercury in the heart of the sun is resetting. Please come to my class. I mentioned earlier, because this is a great one for you. You have flow between your rising sign, Scorpio, and what's happening in the sky because it is, oh, did I say Scorpio? I'm sorry. I was looking at the fire signs. I apologize. You don't have flow between that, but you do have some energy to talk about. Oh my God, where's my brain? Okay, so for you guys, energy wise, this is a real reset an opportunity for some more success, glory and riches in your workhouse. And this is like your office space, your colleagues, your employers, your employees, the coworker space, the work routines and habits you have, as well as your health habits and routines, big energy of a positive re reset with Mercury. Look to mid April onward for the serious evidence of what I'm telling you. Big harvest in the eighth house. So goddess of abundance is harvesting money out of your eighth house, mortgages, bank loans, selling a property. For instance, the Vestal flame is in the fourth house, moving, selling, buying real estate. A devotional flame is being lit in the house of where you live and it's connected to prosperity in a trine to the eighth and it's also amplifying success in your work and health routine so you could move closer to your ideal location for your company you could have a, a, some kind of prosperity that gives you better sense of health this is definitely powerfully prosperous but good for work and health as well Sagittarius, you're getting this fiery trine to your ascendant. Please think of taking my Kazemi class on a one hour webinar with a meditation and a deeper dive into the meaning of the sky. It's going to be on the day of the Kazemi. It's going to be on April 2nd, around four o'clock PST. You'd be ideal for this. You've got a lot of juice to get from this particular one. It is so positive. It's in your house of joy, your house of good fortune, your fifth house, your house of pleasure and fun and play, sexuality, the muse, inspiration, enthusiasm, vitality. Ha! And is on fixed star alpha rats, power, flame, fame, and glory, and riches, and luck, and 
I don't know, whatever, and popularity. Now, if you're a Sag and you're into the arts and stuff and you have this happening in that part of your sky, you could definitely have a breakthrough here where something like a piece of work that you created, a book, a song becomes very popular. And the evidence of that will happen after the middle of April. Um, about the 16th onward when mercury is visible harvest goddess is in your seventh house of business partnerships legal contracts and love con relationships like marriage ones style committed ones monogamous ones and you have the vestal flame in your third house of trips and travel the online platforms of the world and you have the vestal flame in the third house of things you might want to learn or teach i mean if you were a single sag and the vestal flames in the third there's your tinder and your Hinge accounts and uh, harvesting something in a longer term union and the house of romantic love. So for a few of you Sages, this could really, really mean the beginning of a really lovely new love relationship sometime in April, but maybe more so obvious to you after the middle of April. Lastly, <clears throat> the fifth house is your children, so they could be benefiting from this as well. Maybe one of your children will have some kind of powerful breakthrough in popularity or wealth in their lives. And it also benefits you collaterally. All right, I can get this done in half an hour. I'm determined to do it. Capricorn, sun, moon, rising sign, the Kazemi in your fourth house of homeland and real estate is going to move you, baby. Opportunity, news, information coming through from the divine intelligence within maybe uh, by April 16th onward saying, hey, here's an opportunity for a new lease, a new home, to sell your home or buy a home. Uh, Mercury was marketing, right? Merchandise. Uh, Alpharettes brings a really good energy of success here and glory and all that. And it's lucky and it's, it's a lucky star. So you got a lot of blessings regarding things happening in, about, and from your home. And you've got the vessel flame of sacred devotion, lighting up a tinder like energy of some fire in your earnings house. So there's a move that, or something new with home that can help you prosper. Now, some of you could just be selling a property and then you're going to be able to take possession, um, excuse me, possession of the money because possessions are your second house. And there's a flame there connected to this Kazemi. And you also have the great mother harvesting something good and prosperous for you in your sixth house of health and work routines. And so work, money, and home are all mm, getting some kind of hum of yay, some hum of goodness in the sky on April 2nd, likely most pictured out in the world as visible evidence of this hum after the middle of April, when Mercury becomes once again visible. Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. In the heart of the sun goes Mercury on alpha rats in your third house of siblings, short trips and travel, online platforms and stuff, uh, scrying and divining and seers and crystal ball gazers. And lastly, did I forget anything? Writing. Now, I have my son on alpha rats when I was born. This Kazemi is happening on my natal sun. This is really cool for me at 14 degrees of Aries. And so I'm like, wow, what can I download? A new book or something, a new idea? It certainly is an auspicious sky. And Mercury in the heart of the sun is going to get a divine message for Aquarians to do with the th themes of the third, uh, an opportunity to take a trip mid-April onward that's really important, a connection or communication from a sibling, aunt, or uncle, or cousin after mid-April that's critical to what? To series, the harvest goddess in your money luck house, including lottery tickets, or romance, or creativity, or independent business enterprise, or your children. So this is auspicious in all of those areas as this prosperous, abundant, fertile, fruiting, windfall vibing going on in your fifth house. And don't forget romance as well. A trip, a romantic trip, a, tri a, a partner that you're interested in makes a romantic trip with you, to you, you to them. And then the, the vestal flame in that first house, a sacred devotion to your body, to your physical health and wellness, to your appearance is activated by this as well. Now I need a haircut so badly. I have been waiting though for Venus's out of besiegement status, you know, besiege in my first house, worst case scenario, I'd get my hair cut and hate it. And that, you know, best case scenario, I'd mildly like it, but it wouldn't be a good time. So, you know, tending to the flame of the body, the sacred devotion to health and wellness and beauty and how we look, how we feel about ourselves. So this is activating that as well. I do like that fifth house section of sky a lot when Ceres is here because it does bring cornucopias of abundance and there's money luck here like windfalls can happen here as well especially from gaming or lottery tickets I'll let you know how that goes uh, if I win a lottery doing during this time but just know it's a very fortunate time for prosperity for you from lucky money stories speculation as well buying stocks and stuff 
that are risky, the riskier ones. Okay, moving on. I'm not going to linger on myself because I am the Aquarius rising. So I often do me too long. <laughs> moving on. So Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign. So the energy is about a money story. There's a reset in your earnings house. You may begin to open up to new sources of income, new ways of making money, or you may receive funds from selling a possession. But all I can say is it good for your money. Alpharettes can bring riches and glory, and it's happening in your riches, in your money house. So, and then of course, the homecoming vibe of that asteroid. Do you want to come home to earning money in a way that sits with you well, that's in alignment with your true voice and calling? That's a vibe that I get here. And so this is a money reset look to middle of April for evidence of this new money flow for you Pisceans. Um, you've got series of harvest goddess in the house of the home. Can you also prosper by selling a home, downsizing your home, changing your home, moving your home, or is it to be able to harvest prosperity and new money sources from your home, like things you're doing in and from your home? Uh, the vessel flame of sacred devotion, uh, you know, trining this prosperity in your home from the 12th house is a suggestion of uh, your ability to also call money from foreign lands and shores like PayPal Stripe accounts, so international funds are available to you, but also some way that you might hold a sacred flame of devotion to some kind of deep spiritual principle, some kind of enlightenment principle, some kind of deep soulful connection to your own soul. That's all being bound into this new direction for prosperity. And again, mid-April, I don't think you're, I think when Mar Mercury's invisible, I don't think you're going to see visible results. So he gets the messages in the heart of the sun on April 2nd and around the 16th, he begins to peek out from underneath the beams of the sun. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Like, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. And don't forget to check out my Kazemi free course webinar. There will be a limit of a hundred people who can participate. Last time I did one of these, I had 99 people sign up and then I have to upgrade my Zoom. So if you want to get in and learn more about this guy and how to use it in your chart, but also do the meditation that I'm leading where you can activate this more directly and maybe get a message that day from Mercury himself to help show you where this new mm, super sweet Kazimi wants to take you. All right. Thanks guys for listening. I will see you soon. Thank you for being a part of my world.